All right, these are our pitcher upgrades for the roster update coming out on August 19th. Be sure to check out our previous video for the hitters, or if you're watching these the other way, if you're watching the pitchers first, then watch the hitters. You know what you're doing. We're going to start uh, something that we've done now a couple weeks in a row. It was with the same guy. We, we did a creative card for Edwin Diaz. Um, I think I don't know if I mentioned this last video. I did get confirmation from Sony San Diego that it's – it, it's the fact that Edwin Diaz is not in the Players Association right now. They did not elaborate as to why. They might not know. All they know is that they can make cards for folks that are in the Players Association. Edwin Diaz is not showing up, so something is amiss there. We don't exactly know what. Um, hopefully the same does not happen for Alex Reyes, and that's who I want to create a card for. i got to find someone, somebody with mad arms. That's not even a picture. Or this night, yeah. Because I want to make sure that we can get him with Matt. I might just end up doing stupid Trevor Rosenthal. Seventy-six, jeez, embarrassment. Forty-six arm strength. Get out of here. All right, I'm only gonna look at one more here. Eric and Donut. No, okay. We're just gonna do. We're just gonna edit Trevor Rosenthal. Then, how about that? All right, pitch types. Let's start there. Yeah, Diaz hasn't submitted paperwork yet. I, I, that's what I assumed, but whatever it is, yeah, that's probably what it is. Do you, do you have confirmation on that? Because like I, I, I've suggested the same, but I don't have any way to confirm that. All right, let's focus on Alex Reyes' pitches. He's got the four seam fastball, which is what he's using the most. Nice curveball and passable changeup. That needs work. That's what's going to help him be a, a stud starter if he's going to be a stud, a stud starter. Why did it do that? Where did he go? Get back over here, Trevor Rosenthal. Where did you even go? He went all the way down to a 72. Just, oh, because it probably mi mixed up his pitches. All right. So he has a tiny sample. So that it's a little bit tough. Why not do bad again? Uh, it's a little bit tough. Now, one thing that I think we could see, which I would like to see, is he came up, he came up from starting all year. So I'd want to see him with, like, honestly, his stamina should be in, like, the 50s or 60s, but even something in the 40s I would take, just so I can con confidently use him for two innings if I want. Remember, this is Alex Reyes. For those of you just coming in, we're making an Alex Reyes mock-up card right now. Now, I'm going to quote you as Major League Numbers. And I don't know if you pitched on Tuesday night, but I'm quoting you before Tuesday night's numbers. Um, they're so tiny that they're not even necessarily worth quoting. I'm actually looking up to see if he pitched on Tuesday as well. Not that I'm going to fold those numbers in because the it kind of varies when the update gets gets turned in. I've heard it goes Monday, Sunday or Monday. He did pitch again. He pitched two innings and they were brilliant. Oh, my goodness. He's so good. Well, I've only got four innings of work, and he's allowing 2.2 .2 hits, zero homers, 2.2 .2 walks, nine Ks. But here, let's look at what he's done in the minors. 7.2 hits, 0.4 homers, 4.6 walks, 12.1 Ks. Now, let's start with the fastball. He's actually got a 98-mile-per-hour heater that I don't know that we can really give him control on anything. He doesn't necessarily know where anything's going. I'm going to go with like 48. But that sucker can move. Like, to get that kind of velocity and movement, it's pretty dirty. Now, his curve is a 78 mile per hour hammer. Again, I'm going to go 48. I'm just going to be conservative here because they go pretty hard. They really make him prove it on the. Like, his walk rate is probably going to start. They start guys with good minor league walk rates in the 30s and 40s. They're definitely going to start him down here in the 30s. And that's all right. Again, this is Alex Reyes. Let's see here. Oh, the break is filth monster. I'll go 70. Doesn't throw the changeup a lot. And he throws it at 88. The control is probably even worse. I got to go low. The break is still pretty good, though. He's still got pretty filthy stuff. So that's what we're going to do for uh, for uh, Alex Reyes' pitches. And then here's his metrics. I'm going to go with 
70 hit for now. 70 homer, because he does not he did not allow homers in the minors. 85k. I don't know if they'll bring him in at that, but I think that's what he deserves. And then I'll go 35 on the walk. I was originally I originally wrote down 40. And then I had 30 up there. We'll meet in the middle. We'll go 35. This is what I think an Alex Reyes created card could look like. Let's see what that comes in as. Comes in as a 75. And it is, and it is definitely that, um, that, that BB9 and control. But that's what, that's what he deserves. Like, he, he had major troubles commanding the ball as a minor leaguer. Now, I will admit, that was all as a starter, and so maybe they can be a little bit more favorable. And I, I, I talked about this last week with the Rysel Iglesias. Like, pitchers are different players when, when you're a starter and when you're a reliever. So they're in a conundrum, right, because we haven't really seen him be anything but a reliever in the, ma in the majors, and his control has been pretty good. I don't think he's had a whole lot of walks. But in the minors, we know that he was erratic, and that's part of the reason that he's even starting right, or that he's even relieving right now, is because they can't really trust him to go five innings. So maybe on the aggressive side, they can say, you know what, he's shown better control as a reliever. Let's give him a fighting chance, and let's give him a 48. I, I just don't think they can go above 50. He's had too many command issues in the minors. Maybe they do that, in which case, if you're going to have a 48 BB9, you've got to have a little bit better on the fastball. We'll go. 57. We're still going to leave these low. Maybe I'll go a couple extra points there. What would that do? That moves him to a 77. So I got 75 officially going in the book, and then 77 if, if, they give, if they're a little bit more friendly to him based on six innings of awesome work, but still just six innings. And yeah, someone in the chat's mentioning how Wade Davis was a terrible starter, goes into the bullpen and was super elite. And so it's like, it's two different things. Apparently, I think they're coming out with a Wade Davis starter card, like a rookie from um, when he was with Tampa Bay. It'll be interesting to see how they, you know, they'll show the juxtaposition of that card compared to his diamond. It's just completely different. So it, it, it's, it's tough because they could also bring in like Edwin Diaz in like, the mid 80s you know pushing the, a gold right out of the gate and i don't think it would be completely out of bounds so all right so that's a that's our create a card i don't know if we're going to do one of those every week if there's like an alluring rookie that we want to see and maybe there will be because it is august and then once september starts we're going to see tons of call-ups maybe we will jump the gun on one every week a special one we're not going to say it's a staple though because we're not going to force it if there's not a good one but if there's a good one we'll do this because it is fun But let's get into the actual upgrades here. And you guys know, for those of you that have been coming around, I say that phrase a lot, by the way. But for those of you who have been coming around and seeing these a lot, you know that I like to do, I like to upgrade a common every week. And you might've noticed that I didn't upgrade a common during the, uh, during the hitter. So you're probably like, wait, 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 wait. Is this guy not gonna do his common of the week? Dun, 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 dun. Common of the week is, Grant Dayton. You guys are like, what? Even Grant Dayton is like, wait, me? Yeah, Grant. Thanks for watching, by the way. Look at these sick numbers. I'm literally going to be sick at these numbers. I'm, I'm definitely going to vomit. These are terrible. That's all right, though. He deserves much better. Now, it's only eight innings of work, and I was just talking about how we only got four to six innings of work for Alex Reyes. I don't want to go too ham, but his minor league numbers have been great. He's a 28-year-old who's kind of been in transition to the bullpen here, I think maybe a couple years ago, but he's been way, way good this year. I think he deserves some big jumps. Let me just read off his major league numbers right now. 2.2 hits, 1.1 homers, 1.1 walks, 14.6 strikeouts. Those are insane, but those are eight innings. Let me give you something a little bit more sub substantive. 52 innings of work in the minors. 5.2 hits, 0.3 homers, 1.9 walks, 15.8 Ks. Now, part of that is that he's just dominating younger competition because he's 28 years old in the minors. But 
he's still, I mean, those are still really exemplary numbers. So I think it is time to give him a substantial upgrade here and give him a fighting chance. So I'm moving up the hits per nine, 40 points up to 62. That's not even that good. But he deserves to be way higher than this. I'm moving up the Ks, 30 points to 76. Because again, he was King everybody in the minors too, 15.8. That's, that's amazing. You don't just fake that. That's not just because you uh, have the leg up age-wise. That's, that's some skill. Walk rate, 20 points up to 62. And then the home runs, 20 points up to 58. So like insane upgrades, 40, 30, 20, and 20. He has .3 homers allowed in the minors since 2014. He does not allow homers. It's that simple. Uh, his minor league numbers, all told, 7.3 hits, 0.6 homers, 2.9 walks, and 11.5 strikeouts. So this is just what we, uh, you know, he's been a good pitcher, even though he is old. I mean, the stuff is not very good. I understand that it's not going to be the most overwhelmingly useful player. But I was looking over, his name jumped out. And uh, he deserves a healthy upgrade. Now he's going to go from a 47 to probably like a 67 which is a massive upgrade, but hell, let's get Grant Dayton his freaking upgrade, man, and get him on that path to diamond. It's gonna be a diamond by the end of the year. You can bank on that. I called it 67. Got him. All right, let's move on. Oh shit, we're going two commons, y'all. I was kind of surprised when I saw that he was still a common. Jamison Tyon, still a common. So this one is in dire need. I don't think he should still be a common anymore. Since being recalled from the minors, he's got 7.6 hits allowed, 0.8 walks, 7.3 Ks, and 0.8 homers. So, big upgrade here. We're going up to 70. Walks, limiting walks has always been his deal, though. So this is, I mean, that's why I said Alex Reyes is going to come in with like a 22 if we're not if we're not careful because they, they're hard on guys who don't walk players in the minors. What are they going to do about somebody who's been a walk master? Which in this case would be a negative. Sounds like a cool thing. Like, oh, he's a walk master. He doesn't walk anybody. No, it's a bad thing. He's a walk master. He walks everybody. Uh, but his hits, five. His hits have not been great. K's, not a huge K guy. Five. The walks are what's really changing here. We could see his homers go up. It depends how much they really kind of dive into it. He did not allow a whole lot of homers in the minors. And the way it's kind of gone this year, he's, he has two multi-homer games, and he allowed five homers in those two games, three and two. And then he allowed two homers in his other eight games combined. So he had kind of a, a bad luck run there with those two games, and then the other eight kind of show the fact that, you know, he keeps the ball down. He doesn't, he doesn't allow too much crazy hard contact and he keeps the ball in the yard but I'm leaving it as is that's my official but I can see even like a 7 to 10 point upgrade in the homer per 9 which would certainly help this is not going to be eye popping let me just prepare you but it's going to get him into bronze of course yep 73 67 to 73 not bad Let's just see what it would do if, I, if they did give him the homer upgrade, which, again, I think is viable, but I'm not projecting it. I'll go with the uh, seven points right up to a 50. That's probably a couple more points, right? Ah, uh, just one more. All right, next up, staying on his team here, we got to get Juan Nicasio fixed up right here. Another guy who, if you kind of split him as a starter and reliever, it's, it's two different players, and so... It's hard though sometimes to divorce the numbers and say, okay, you know, he's relieving. We gotta completely revamp him as opposed to if we could just made a different player named Steve Beltran based on his relief numbers, they'd probably probably be better than what we're gonna do here. It, it's a tough balance for them. So we gotta get we gotta cut this stamina a little bit. Can't be 82. He does he is still a long reliever though. So I'm gonna keep it at 65 because he is still going multi inning outings. This should be a guy that you can use for multiple outings. Somebody I would definitely take in BR. 
for what I mentioned, probably once a week. Those long games that you're almost guaranteed to get if you're going to have a big run. This is a guy you can you can rely on for a few different innings. Now, as a reliever, since 6-26, since June 26, when he was kind of officially ousted from the rotation and moved into relief, he's allowed 8.3 hits, 2.6 walks, 12.8 Ks, and .3 homers. As a reliever since last year, 9.0 hits, 4.4 walks, 11.1 strikeouts, and still .3 homers. So what that adds up to for me is a strikeout and, and home run upgrade. Six points on the strikeouts, 12 points on the homers. He's allowed .6 homers as a reliever for his entire career and 1.2 as a starter. So once he goes into that re relief role, he's doing shorter stints. He just doesn't give up nearly as many home runs, and I think that needs to be reflected in his card. Now, his walk rate this year as a reliever has been much better, 2.6. But since last year, it's 4.4, so that tells you how much he was walking guys last year, and we can't just ignore that. So there could maybe be a little upgrade here, like to 53, but I'm going to leave it at 49 right now. I think that's the right thing to do. And then the hits, he's not really stifling hits, so 63 is fine. This is the guy that you would play better with because it would be kind of pure stuff and your ability to kind of control the analog, pulse, meter, or classic. Wait, classic, you don't really have any control. But the other ones, if you're a good pitcher, you might be able to get more out of him because of raw stuff. Speaking of, he should probably get some velocity upgrade because he is in the bullpen now, and he can pop mid-90s more regularly. So I'm going to add that in as well. I don't know if that changes the overall. Right now we're going from a 69 to a 72. Let me do it without the velocity up here just to see. Nope, still a 72 either way. All right, now we take a big jump. Nobody in the 70s. The rest are silvers or better. The rest of the way in, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven left, and someone's going to diamond. You guys can start thinking of your guesses of who it might be. I'll tell you it's a starting pitcher that I've got, I think, going to diamond. I don't run the numbers before, but based on the upgrades I'm giving him, I think it's enough to get him into the diamond. For those of you on Twitch, you can go ahead and try to guess right now in the chat. Uh, those of you on YouTube, just, just guess in your head. Or you can put it in the comments, but I'll, I'll never believe that you didn't just go to the end and look at it. Because you guys are a bunch of cheats, YouTube. YouTube, no, I'm kidding. I never do well with that little wheel. I was trying to go over to Toronto and I completely missed. Talking about a Marcus Stroman upgrade though. Stroman kind of getting back on track a little bit. I had high hopes for him coming into the year. It has not worked out as much as he's wanted. Uh, I like that somebody just guessed that Mookie would be the diamond upgrade for pitchers. Mookie Betts, ladies and gentlemen. Mookie Betts was already on the hitter upgrade show, and I'm not going to spoil that in case you are watching this on YouTube. Please go watch the hitter upgrade show. For you in the Twitch chat, you're just going to have to wait or have somebody in chat tell you what happened with Mookie. All right, Marcus Stroman was downgraded on June 24th. Since then, 8.5 hits, 1.7 walks, 9.3 strikeouts, 1.4 homers. So mediocre hits, great walks, really good Ks, especially for him, and terrible homers. So what's that add up to? plus six on the strikeouts. We did this upgrade a couple weeks ago too, by the way, just so you know, we're revisiting. Plus there, minus three there, and we'll leave the hits alone. 81 to 83. All right. Next up, happens to be on the best team in the universe. Happens to be the best. Now, one thing that's really bad, and we got to get San Diego Studios back on this, he used to have two two-seamers, and they took one of them away. Why'd they do that? I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding about the fact that he used to have two two-seamers. Something happened during one of the updates, and he got two two-seamers. It's kind of funny. There was no difference. It was a mess up. It was accidental. Uh, but they fixed it that very next week, so that was good. 
But Michael Fulmer, man, he just continues to beast out. Had his first complete game uh, through a shutout in Texas. Could have gone, too. Even uh, so, you know, not trying to give a sob story or whatever, but I had some car issues, kind of had to invest in that. So, and plus, I didn't really feel comfortable taking my car up. My sister said that we could go, and we could have just took a quick jaunt up there on Sunday. It would have been dope to see that. I had to do some other stuff, and I was like, ah, nah, I'm just watching on TV. Glad I at least watched it, though. It was awesome. Uh, he pitched so well against that Texas lineup in Texas. Are you kidding me? He's been amazing. I think one thing that I'd really like to see is even even better work on this changeup because this changeup has really changed who he is. No pun intended there. He really broke it out against Tampa Bay. You can go look in this game log. It's a, it's a start against them where he went seven innings, one run. It was an Evan Longoria bomb, 11 strikeouts. The, that was the changeups coming out party, and since then, he has been unbelievable. Anyway, he was last upgraded on June July 22nd, not too long ago, but since then, 6.9 hits, 1.0 walks, 6.7 strikeouts, and 1.0 homers. So the strikeouts aren't great. He's not really a, a, a blown away kind of dominating pitcher from a strikeout standpoint. But then when you watch him, you do realize that he does have overpowering stuff. And that I really think the strikeouts are going to eventually start to come uh, in, in, in greater numbers, but probably not till next year. He has nine walks in his last nine starts. He has .5 homers per nine in his last 15 starts since the changeup fueled surge. He has .6 homers allowed in 398 minor league innings. So what's all this adding up to? A big home run upgrade, by the way. Up to 73. So it's a 12 point jump. I wanna bump his walks up to 70. And I want to bump his hits up to 77. I'm leaving the K's at 71. You could even suggest maybe a couple ticks downward, and I would not completely freak out on that. But you look at his swinging strike rate, and again, you sit down and watch him, and you see what Michael Fulmer is able to do on a start-to-start -start basis. It's not that he doesn't have swing and miss. It's that he doesn't really go for strikeouts. He's just trying to accumulate outs in any way that he can. So... Um, I'm not going to mess with this right now. I think that those should be improved, but they probably won't be. So let's just go with what we've got here. He goes from an 82 to an 85. New gold. Will he get it? I don't know. Does he deserve it? You're damn right. One of the things that he did with that shutout in Texas was um, accumulate enough innings to be qualified for the ERA title. And now he leads the American League by a lot. His 225 ERA is way better than uh, Danny Duffy. Well, Danny Duffy had a 286, 282 coming into his Tuesday night outing against Detroit. Let me see what he lowered it to while, while we're talking about it because he definitely moved closer. He's got a 273 now after seven and two thirds of one run ball. So, he, But he's still half a run behind Fulmer. That's how insane Fulmer is. So he's a gold, he's a beast. All right, next up is a, is a guy that we looked at last week when he was moving over to closer. I'm still lobbying for an upgrade for Ken Giles. All they did was move him to closer, which gave him a one point. I don't know what they're waiting for. we got to get this guy back up to gold. He's been an absolute monster. I don't know if my upgrade is going to get him to gold. I think they will, though. He was downgraded on May 2nd. I understood. He had a terrible April. This tail spinning out of control. The team was, he was, it was brutal. Since then, though, 7.2 hits, 2.7 walks, 14.2 strikeouts, 0.2 homers. Now, since just July 1st, he's got 5.5 hits, 2.7 walks, 19.9 Ks. Yes, 20 Ks per nine since July 1st, and zero homers allowed. So here's what I've got. One, two, three there. 10 here. He doesn't allow homers. I don't know why he's not in the 80s already. And 10 here, up to 93. Yep, I'm doing it, y'all. He has 12.3 strikeouts per nine since 2014. That's sixth best among relievers. He gave up 14.4 hits in April. And then since then, he's allowed like 7.2 hits. 
So he's been awesome. He has one bad month. He gave up a homer in three of his first four outings this year. And he has a .4 home run per nine in 42 and two-thirds innings since then. And a .4 for his career. Again, he doesn't allow homers. He had a bad luck streak. I mean, not even necessarily bad luck. I don't want to write it off to that. He pitched poorly in April. But he had a run of a handful of outings where he pitched poorly. That's it. Uh, he gave up. Oh, so what I'm doing with the with the three point hit upgrade and the ten point homer upgrade, I'm giving him the points that he lost in the downgrade. I'm just giving those back. That's all, and then adding ten points to his strikeout rate because he's a strikeout monster. And I moved him all the way up to an 88. And you know what? He damn deserves it. Ken Giles, beast. I'll admit I was a little leery of him after the horrific start. I was like, dang. I thought he was going to be a beast this year. I guess he's terrible. And I was wrong. got to calm down on relievers. Don't tell me my battery's getting low. Your battery's getting low. All right. Moving out to the Mets. Now, Steven Matt's got a downgrade. It was a pretty quick trigger. But he had the bone chips, and he still does. The bone spurs in his elbow which I think made them more confident to just kind of hit him with a downgrade maybe a little bit earlier than they might otherwise. He got downgraded on July 8th. Since then, 8.4 hits, 2.5 walks, 9.2 strikeouts, 1.0 homers. He was actually upgraded on June 3rd, so a month before. And, since, and then in June, he went 11.7 hits, 2.2 walks, 8.7 strikeouts, 1.4 homers. So it was the hits and the homers that really turned. Here's the thing. I'm not going ham on this upgrade. Um, I'm going the, I'm going five up to a 57 here. That's the average uh, for starting pitchers is one is 57 and his 1.0 homer per nine is about average. So that, that's what we're dealing with. And then two points on the Ks. That's it. Not really a game game-changing upgrade, but it might get him back to that gold status. Nope, not quite. 83 to 84. He's just been pitching well, and I kind of wanted to acknowledge it. Um, it's not my most confident upgrade, but, you know, I, I certainly believe in it. I wouldn't just, I don't force him, but I still, you know, they still kind of have a ranking. All right, another reliever, and then two starters, including a new diamond think we're going to find out together, but I think it will pan out that way. Back to Toronto. Back to Roberto Osuna. Roberto Osuna is kind of ignored because he should be better. So um, seven of his 11 earned runs this year have come came in June. So he had a, he had a tough June, earned earn run-wise. But since July 1st, 3.9 hits, 1.7 walks, 10.6 strikeouts and 0.6 homers. Those are all super elite numbers. Here, for this year, he's got a huge jump in Ks. He's got a small drop in walks. Since 2015, with a minimum of 100 innings for a reliever, that, that, that gets a group of 67 relievers. He's 14th in strikeouts, 7th in walks, 8th in average, and 37th in homers. So he gives up some homers. So we're gonna, you know, we're not gonna mess with that. Um, that's just one of his flaws. Doesn't hurt us in this game, though. Online play does not include homer per nine. I say it every week, and I'll continue to let the masses know. So don't get hung up on that. However, we need just a couple points in the hits, three points in the walks, and ten points in the Ks. What are we doing with his K rate? He's been a monster with the Ks. Um... I mentioned 10.6 since July 1st. You look, he's increased his Ks big time this year. I should have written down exactly what it is. But 14th among relievers in strikeouts since 2015. I mean, he's, he's been great. He's carrying it over year to year as well. I also think that the slurve deserves a control upgrade. Now, let me do what I normally do here, and I'll say, okay, he's at an 85 right now. What about with just those upgrades that I gave him, those surface upgrades? That's an 88. And what if we upgrade the control on his slurve? I don't even know if it'll move the needle, but I'm giving it a pretty big upgrade up to a 73. Let me tell you why. 
40% strikeout rate, 3% walk rate since 2015 with this slur. It's a monster pitch. He should have better control of it. It doesn't do anything for the overall either. So he's just a flat 88, which, I, not flat, but he's just 88 even with the pitch upgrade. Look at that. What if, like, it doesn't matter, but I'm just saying for the market purposes, what if he was a 70? He doesn't deserve an upgrade there, but, I, you know, we know Homer does, doesn't really matter, but it affects overall. He'd be a 90. Yeah, so, I mean, if you took out, if you could kind of remove Homer's per nine and just grade him on the other ones, the hits nine, K9, B9, BB9, and his pitches, and even the clutch, I guess, since he'll get better with runners in scoring position, he's easily one of the best pitchers going. All right, two starters left, including a potential diamond. This is a revisit. Uh, he was on the August 5th upgrade show, so a couple weeks ago, for you, Darvish. Since just that point, just since that small point, 7.2 hits per nine, 1.7 walks, 12.0 Ks, 1.5 homers. Now, that's not... The only thing that we're dealing with this year, but he's been great really all year. Injuries have been the only thing that slowed him down, kind of returning from Tommy John, getting another um, injury. I can't remember what it was. Was it a strained bicep, maybe? Or a neck? I really can't remember. It was this phone call in the middle of the morning? I don't know anybody from Taylor, Texas. Oh, that might have been my sister. Yeah. She'll call back. I don't think it was. She'll call from herself. All right. Focus on you, Darvish, here. I'm going two points on K's, four points on hits, seven points on walks. He's got a career best walk rate this year. He's really working on it. Now, I'm going to go minus two here. He's allowed seven home runs. Three of them came in one game against Baltimore, but those count. And he has been worse, so we are going to give him a little bit of a ding there. He has seven starts out of his nine of zero or one walk. That's really good, seven of nine. In 2014, he had seven as well out of 22 starts though. So he's really made some improvements with his walk rate this year. I don't wanna go crazy though because he's had walk troubles in the past. So that's why I think seven points is probably the highest I can really go. They might only move it up maybe three to five points, which I think would be fair as well. You don't wanna go too crazy. Um, but he's definitely showing a, a drop in walks this year. So far, it's only nine starts. But this moves him up to a 90, so from 88 to 90, that's pretty good. All right, and then drum roll, please. Somebody guessed it in the in the Twitch chat. A potential new diamond is Klubot, Corey freaking Kluber. Now, I'm going in on this one. He's been awesome, and he's been awesome since his breakout year. I mean, um, I know he has some ups and downs. He can be inconsistent. If you have him in fantasy, he can kind of annoy you because he'll have some crappy team just blast him for five earned, and you're like, how, the, how, how does that happen? He just struck out 14 five days ago against Detroit in Detroit. You know, the best team in the universe in their home. You're striking out 14, and then you're playing freaking Minnesota, missing two of their best players, and you get run up for five or six earned. I don't know why he has some of the volatility, but the bottom line is always still excellent. So he was just upgraded on June. Excuse me. I always mess up June and July because I'm dumb. He was Upgraded on July 22nd. Since then, 6.4 hits, 1.9 walks, 8.4 Ks, 1.0 homers. Here's the thing. He beasted against the White Sox on Tuesday night. And that's not even counted in anything I'm talking about. He was in the middle of that game. Um, and like I said, the, the upgrade, I think, is often cut off on Tuesday afternoon. So even things on Tuesday night don't go into it. Since 2014... This is among starters. He's 12th in batting average, 14th in home runs, 5th in strikeouts, 18th in, in walks. 
since, 24, uh, since 2015, so cut off the Cy Young year. Fine. He moves up up to 10th in, uh, in average, so he, he gets a couple of ticks better. He gets a little bit worse in walks, down to 18th, but the difference is minuscule. He goes down to 9th in strikeouts. Again, the difference is minuscule, and he stays with the same exact walk rate, but just gets bumped down to 20th. So even if you take off that best year of his, the Cy Young season, he's still been one of the very best pitchers over the last year and two-thirds. This year, he's 11th in average, 14th in homers, 20th in strikeouts, 17th in walks. Here's my case. I'm not sure how Jacob deGrom can be a diamond and Corey Kluber can't be. To me, that doesn't make sense. And this isn't an anti-DeGrom thing so much as it is a pro-Kluber situation. I'm just saying, I think if you're going to have DeGrom be there, which is fine, he can, he can definitely make the case for it, you got to have Kluber there as well because Kluber's better than, than Jacob DeGrom. So what I want, I'd like to see uh, 6 on the hits up to 82, 10 on the homers up to 72. Doesn't really allow uh, too many homers to be a problem. Five on the strikeouts. Five on the walks. Now that is some fill. That's a that's a good that's a good set right there. Let's see what that does for Kluber. This is why I think this is gonna go to Diamond right here. That's a pretty those are pretty big upgrades. Boom, 94, Diamond. Let's go, Klubot, new diamond. Klubot should be a diamond. That's all I'm saying. Klubot should be a diamond. He, he's not getting enough love for the AL Cy Young either, folks. He's, he's making a run. And look what he did in this. And I'm, this is not really comparable. I, I shouldn't even bring it up as like a, a talking point because it's not the same thing. But I'm just, I just want to point it out that in 2014, he really made a big run late in the season. And that big September, I think, over Felix. Whereas Felix maybe had a bad outing against Toronto, I think, where he got bombed out for eight runs really kind of was the difference there while Kluber just kept dominating throughout all of September so we could see another huge stretch run out of him and uh, simple fact is Kluber needs to be diamond all right now let's review we made a mock-up of an Alex Reyes card and it's a 75 to Grant Dayton from the Dodgers from 47 to 67 Jamison Tyon from 67 to 73, Juan Nicasio from 69 to 72, Marcus Stroman from 81 to 83, Michael Fulmer from 82 to 85, new gold, Ken Giles from 83 to 88, new gold, Steven Matz, 83 to 84, Roberto Osuna, 85 to 88, Hugh Darvish, 88 to 90, and Corey Kluber, 90 to 94. And we'll see how those turn out on uh, 